Good morning everyone. This is Michael with Quiet Lawn. I uh, thought I would take you along today on one of our fertilization routes. It's the right now it's uh, December 16th. We're doing our last mowing today. Drew's out doing the mowing and we're trying to finish up our last round of treatment lawn treatments right now so uh we're not actually well we are doing a winterizer fertilizer just potassium but we're mostly putting out pre-emergence for this winter um so i'm going to take you along uh right now i'm mixing up my tank uh mixing up our 200 gallons of uh of a uh, mix here and i'm going to go ahead and load up the fertilizer and spreader uh, the fertilizer we're putting down, we have warm season grass, so it's completely different than cool season grass. So if you're in an area where you have cool season grass, disregard any of this advice because it's a whole different ball game. But uh, we are putting down potassium only, uh, which is great for the root system. A lot of problems we have over the winter here are problems with disease because it stays so wet and the grass is dormant and it's not soaking up. Uh, you know much of the water so it just uh, creates a lot of problems with disease and potassium will really help uh, strengthen up the root system and kind of uh, you know kind of reduce damage from that disease so we're putting that out and then we're putting down a pre-emergent for our grasses to prevent things like poa annua which is a problem everywhere and other weeds you get in the winter uh, the particular product we're using is called simazine uh, this round uh, it's a great product for warm season grass um, but that's what we'll be putting down and I'll strap the end of my uh, chest mount uh, GoPro chest mount and let you watch how that works um, as far as equipment for weed control and fertilization you could really start out with a uh, just a backpack sprayer and a push spreader uh, backpack sprayer I would recommend would be one by flow zone uh, you can get a four gallon backpack sprayer that works really well uh, you'll eventually want to get a skid sprayer like this because you can uh, it just makes everything so much faster because uh, if you're doing with a backpack you're going to have to be filling your tank your backpack sprayer up probably multiple times each yard uh, at least once um, with a skid sprayer you can you know pretty much spray all day uh, and you know it's just a lot more efficient but if you're just starting out you know it just doesn't make sense to buy a five six seven thousand dollar skid sprayer uh, to, to treat a couple of lawns um, you're going to need a push spreader as well uh, I do recommend getting a commercial push spreader because they're going to do a lot better job at distributing the fertilizer and other products evenly. evenly. Um, also, they're just going to hold up better. Um, we use a spiker spreader, and I hate to say it, I like the spiker people. They're nice people, but I don't recommend it. Like I said, we only have a couple hundred customers, and we've had a lot less than that. Uh, so this thing is getting used maybe one or two days a week over the last and not even that you know basically just during the summer uh for the last couple of years and we've had this thing two years and it's falling apart uh the the tub cracked uh just where the bolts were put in uh little pieces falling off uh you know we've had to replace pins which is normal on mo most spreaders um this stainless steel is not very well coated uh it's you know it's rusting we, we wash this thing off every t every day when we fertilize it and it's still uh rusting away kind of um so i wouldn't recommend it you know i would recommend getting an anderson or a lesco uh, i know people that have had those for 15 20 years you know you have to replace pins but they've never had anything break and they're still working uh very well so uh like i said is i like the how comfortable spiker spreaders are to use they're very easy to push um, but they just don't seem very durable um, we had the deflector right here to be able to close this deflector and it keeps you from shooting fertilizer onto the neighbor's yard or into beds uh, that thing fell apart within the first month or two and kind of fell off and we lost one of the pins for it um, so you know just little things like that it's uh you know just not doesn't seem very durable compared to other commercial spreaders and it's not really any cheaper than an anderson or a lesco so i would go those routes we are actually looking at getting uh, a battery self-propelled version of this spreader made by power spreaders a company in florida i believe around tampa uh, and we're looking at getting one of those over the winter um, these are about six or seven hundred dollars and one of those is probably three thousand to thirty five hundred um and i'm looking at getting one of those because it'd make things a lot easier for the guys and you know because when you're in the middle of the summer 
and it's a 110 degree heat index and you're pushing a spreader with you know 50 or 60 pounds of fertilizer uh, through thick grass uh, it gets really difficult so uh, we might not even get either one of those other spreaders we might get the the power spreader instead and i believe it has a lesco uh, hopper on it okay we're all mixed up we got our 200 gallons of product mixed up ready to go uh, the last thing that we do every day is we clean out our filter before we go uh, i definitely recommend that because a lot of products can tend to clog up or you know clump up and you want to keep that thing clean because it's going to keep your flow coming out of your gun and it's going to protect your pump so uh, we clean that out once a day sometimes more than once a day if uh, you know if we have any issues or if we have a particular round that has a product that tends to clump up more than others um, so i've got that cleaned up uh, the last thing i'm gonna do is put my boots on uh, we use uh, as far as spray boots you want something that's waterproof you don't want this you know you don't want to you're going to be spraying this stuff so you want to have preferably pants that are waterproof and boots that are waterproof so that you're not just soaking yourself with a product all day um, i recommend extra tough boots uh, these are the ones i've been using for a couple years and uh, i'll link to a product i'll link to them below uh, so you can see those um, but what I like about them is honestly, they're the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. Uh, and I buy, I have a lot of problems with my feet and I have to buy like $150, $200 tennis shoes with special insoles, uh, because I just have so many problems with my feet. Um, even with those nice shoes, but with these, these are the only shoes I can wear that I have no foot pain, uh, you know, walking all day and being able to do the job. Um, they're extra wide so if you have wide feet like me i have really wide feet uh, these are actually wider than even extra wide shoes are that i find so there's so much room in these uh, even in the regular sizes these aren't even wide sizes these are just regular sizes but i uh, highly recommend extra tough boots uh, you'll typically get you know a whole season out of them sometimes you'll have to replace them once a season because they'll start cracking and you know maybe right here where the wear points are um, but for rubber boots you would think they would be super uncomfortable but these are like i said these are very comfortable shoes and i highly recommend them um, but okay we're all set i'm gonna i've got my spreader all loaded up strapped in nice and secure uh, got our carrier here and we are ready to go let's go get treating some lawns This trash here. You'll notice that I'm overlapping my concrete or my beds when I spray. If you don't do that, you're going to get uh, poor coverage uh, and you're going to have a strip of weeds or poa annua around the perimeter of your lawn. So you need to make sure you're getting a good even coat over the whole lawn. Go ahead and spray this strip by the road while I'm here. Some liquid fertilizers and iron and different things you might use, you might have to be careful spraying on the concrete because they'll stain. Uh, but with this particular product, it's no concern. There's no staining. So I want to make sure I get good coverage. Some things you spray, you have to be real careful. See, I'm walking at a good consistent pace to help regulate how much chemical I'm putting out, how much product. Also watching not to get on my house as well. It's not an issue with this, but same staining issues can occur with uh, fertilizers and things. I'm also not spraying my bushes or 
trees because you know these products will harm anything that's not grass typically you can see their backyard they've added astroturf so obviously no need to treat that looks good uh solar lights and like little yard trinkets are the uh are your arch nemesis when you're treating lawns you always got to be careful when you're pulling your hose not to break break those things or pull your hose across them it typically goes that you know these people you'll have those people that just love to load their yard up with one dollar yard ornaments or or uh those little one dollar solar lights and if you look at those things they break so you know you end up having to go replace a bunch of lights that you know and cheap uh cheap trinkets so always be real careful of that all right so i'm gonna go pull to the other side of the driveway since they have a car in this driveway too and finish this one out all right done with the first two except for the front yard of the second one i'm about to pull up finish spraying the last two and then start pushing the spreader See, that's a little thing that I've forgotten because I've not been doing this enough is to un, uh, twist my hose as I come back to the truck so that I don't have kinks like that that slow me down. Alright, let's move up and finish. You notice I'm obviously taking my big glove off, the one that has contact with the product. Uh, you know, as I move the truck, I obviously don't want to be rubbing that stuff over the steering wheel and whatnot and all over the truck. So I've got the glove held in my other hand and I'm not touching the doorknob or the steering wheel or anything else with that uh, hand. Put my glove back on. It's really hard to tell. I've learned, you know, from just making the videos that we make, that it's really hard to tell how loud something is from video because all of this stuff, you know, all the electric equipment we have sounds way louder on video just because how the microphones work. Um, but this pump is really quiet, this electric pump we use. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm almost whispering to you right now and I'm 20 feet away from it, much quieter than a gas engine a gas pump that most people run with a honda engine or kawasaki that you can hear you know two miles away route density is so key to profitability uh you can see like every stop i'm doing two three houses on most of them are one and then having to drive you know i'll be in the same neighborhood for probably half the day doing maybe 15 or 20 lawns and then i'll be moving to another neighborhood where i have about the same amount to do but if i was doing a lawn and then driving 10 15 20 minutes between yards you know i would only, i wouldn't be able to get half as much done and you will get route density if you focus you target your market uh, or you target your marketing on the neighborhoods you want to go after uh, you'll get it it'll take time and you'll have to be consistent with your marketing but you'll eventually get it a lot of times you know i'll see the first year we start marketing in a new neighborhood maybe we'll pick up uh you know maybe two three four five customers maybe more sometimes um but then the next year that goes to 10 or 15 and then 20 or 30 and it just continues to grow in that neighborhood as long as you're doing a good job you'll see a lot of these houses uh, we have a grass called centipede and it needs full sun you'll see in a lot of these houses in between the houses uh, there's just not enough sun and it stays really wet so you'll see a lot of bare spots in between houses you'll see a lot of weeds because 
you know there's no grass there to choke it out uh, 95 percent of our lawns are centipede uh, we do have some grass types like zoysia and saint augustine that will do shade but it's rare that you ever see them at somebody's house unless they have it resodded But uh, going back to the grass thinning out, that's why it's so important to be upfront with your customers about what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, you know, in situation, you know, so because some customers think that if they hire you, that they might have that area in between their houses that's never had grass, and they think that you're going to come in there and be a miracle worker, and because you're fertilizing the lawn, all of a sudden you're going to be able to get the grass to thicken up in those areas. And you know, the thing I always tell people, you know, if I can't make grass a plant grow in a condition that god didn't intend it to grow in so you know if that's uh you know i can't make a grass a full sun grass grow in the shade you might be able to keep it a little bit healthier or do you know do some benefit but eventually that grass is going to decline um, because it's not the right grass for that condition and that, at that point i would recommend them to change it out to a grass that's more suited for that condition zoysia or saint augustine I hope this is helping you if you're curious about adding the service because when I started there were no courses to teach you how to treat lawns uh, not that I knew of and this was probably four years ago uh, you know you can find all kinds of videos on how to mow how to do all that stuff but there was nothing like that for spraying you know how do you do it what do you what pattern do you follow what not but I believe there are courses now. I think Jason Creel with Lawn Care Life might have a course. I haven't checked it out, but I've, I've heard it's pretty good. One of the most helpful people, hopefully, uh, for you when you do this kind of business is gonna be your rep from your chemical rep from where you get your products. Uh, my guy, Brian, from Triangle Chemical is awesome. And he actually trained me and my employee at that time to spray and fertilize he came out and he spent several hours with both of us to teach us those things because like i said there was it's not something you can just you can but it, you know it's not smart to try to learn something like this on your own and he came out and spent several hours of his time and you'll probably get to have that same opportunity you know with your uh, with your rep because a lot of those guys used to work on golf courses or they used to treat lawns um, and you know it's a benefit to them because they want your business to grow because you're going to buy more product for them so it's a win-win situation but you might check out some of those courses like i mentioned you know jason krill the lawn care life or you know i'm sure there's others now but like i said there was just none when we started our signs that we put in the yards say that uh, to keep off the lawn for an hour at least and that's what we tell our customers with pets Sorry about that, my battery died on the GoPro. All right. Got our fertilizer out, we've got our pre-emergent out. Now I'm going to blow off my driveways and patios for the two that I put the granular fertilizer on. Put my signs in the ground. Take pictures and move on to the next ones. definitely want to strap your equipment in well i have had this come off the vehicle with the guys while they're going down the highway luckily luckily nobody was right behind them but you want to make sure you strap your equipment in
grab my trusty Ego blower, Ego 650. less on the driveways if that deflector wouldn't have fallen off of the spreader uh, I could uh, you know I could put that deflector, deflector down and kind of keep stuff from it's kind of like a shoot blocker on a mower I could keep a lot of this fertilizer off the hard area as strong as this Ego 650 is I love this blower uh, I can tell a big difference over the lower that we're currently using this year uh, I have one that's actually a good bit stronger uh, we're not it's not on the market yet and we're not allowed to uh, share it with you yet but I hope we are able to within the next year or so but uh, this ego is awesome it's the best thing on the market as far as I know uh, that's actually available um, but this one's even even better by a good bit so hopefully I'll get to share that with you in the near future Real important to grow, blow off uh, your hard surfaces when you put down granular fertilizer. Not so much for this because it's just potassium, but anytime you're putting down nitrogen or anything with iron in it, uh, you're gonna get those rust stains on those hard surfaces. So if you don't blow this off and it rains or you get dew or they water the grass, you're gonna have all these little iron stains all over the, all over the hard surfaces. All right, so everything's blown off there. Get my last two pictures. Might want to walk out the gate, not through the fence. Took me a little bit longer on these. My, I was pretty slow. Plus I had to stop a couple times to fool with the camera, but look at it like about an hour for all three properties. Which still isn't too bad at all considering it would have taken a lot longer to mow these and as I said I'm out of practice I don't if I was doing this four or five days a week I'd be much faster just completing everything here in yard book and I basically did five applications in an hour because I had the two upsells the two winterizer fertilizers and then my uh, three regular treatments so still not too shabby about uh, 12 minutes uh, per application <laughs> Most important step here, getting our sign out so we can advertise our work, get some more customers. All right, I'm putting my sign so that it's an angle at an angle where people driving by can see it. People walking here on the sidewalk can see it. Strapped in here. some agua hop in the van start it up clock out of my last job And we are complete. Hey guys, I just finished up. It's 5 o'clock. I started uh, at the shop at 9. 
and it took me about an hour, an hour, you know, to get to the first property after mixing everything up. Uh, went well today. I did have to stop uh, for about 45 minutes or an hour to replace a sprinkler head for one of our customers, uh, and I also chit chatted with a lot of customers and you know handled a lot of emails and stuff from the office. You know, different different things that I had to deal with. Um, but still, all in all, I uh, ended up uh, completing or servicing 18 different customers. Uh, I Seven of those uh, had the add-on winterizer fertilizer, so that's almost like an extra application. Um, but it was a good day. Uh, you know, I'm, when I'm in the practice of things, I probably could have easily gotten well over 20. Uh, and, you know, after a few more days of doing this, I'll probably be back up to, you know, regularly getting you know 25 or so properties a day but i'm rusty i haven't treated lawns in a couple months and uh you know i've uh, mostly been leaving it to our uh, technician kevin um but uh but yeah it was a good day uh you know a lot of production uh, with a one-man crew with mowing you know you're you're lucky to get four four to five hundred dollars a day maybe sometimes six hundred uh in production uh with weed control and fertilization you know one man can like today probably did 1200 plus now you know 20 to 30 percent of that is going to be cost of materials you know your your products your your chemicals and things um, but you know it's still you can generate a whole lot more revenue uh, per hour labor revenue per hour than mowing um, but like i said you've got the other downsides you've got a you've got a big liability if you uh, do something wrong and damage someone's property uh, it's a lot bigger learning curve. You have to really know what you're doing. You do have the chemical cost. So that's a, a big part of it as well. Um, and, you know, it just depends where you're at in the country. Some guys, you know, there might be around 20% uh, material cost, and some guys might be closer to 35 or 40, depending on where you're at, because, uh, you know, a lot of cool season grasses take a lot more fertilizer. Um, but it's a good business overall. I enjoy it. Uh, I'll be much more excited when we have a lot more customers for that service uh, when I at least have one full-time technician um, but uh, but yeah it's, it's definitely an appealing thing uh, if you're just starting out I would recommend just focusing on mowing and simple services uh, because it's just a lot to learn and like I said you're gonna have to get uh, hundreds of customers before you know you really have enough work to keep you busy uh, it would be very hard unless you just had a ton of money or you had you know had somehow connections with lots of customers that you could you know start out the first year with with uh with enough to keep you busy it would be very hard unless you just like i said you had a big chunk of money to live on for a few years to start off just treating lawns uh, i know a lot of guys eventually transition into that from mowing they'll you know they'll start out with a mowing business and landscaping and they'll eventually uh, you know kind of move towards having a, a spray only business uh, that's not my intention I you know I have a, a lot of uh, goals with our business and I like what we offer um, but you know a lot of guys do eventually end up to end up just treating only um, so just finished up took me about you know like I said eight hour day between mixing and everything I'm heading back to the shop now I'm going to uh, empty out my fertilizer uh, spreader uh, go ahead and rinse that out put my uh, work phone back in the shop lock everything up and then you know get ready to do it again tomorrow so i appreciate you coming along with me uh sorry i didn't get to take you with all the properties but you know like i said it ended up being a seven or eight hour video